morning, everybody. Welcome this morning to our worship of God in Jesus Christ. It is the 16th Sunday after Pentecost. Here are some announcements. Next week is Blessing of the Animals. So we will be outside because we're not bringing animals in here. If it's nice like today, we'll be in the chapel. And if it isn't, then we'll be in the pavilion. So bring a chair and bring an animal. Prefer never mind, I was gonna say preferably live animals. <clears throat> um, I had a whole bunch of announcements in my head when I was sitting right there, but they're all gone now. Oh, heads up for October. Pastor Mike and Pastor Jocelyn and Ben and I have decided that it would be nice to have more unity in the parish. And one way we're doing that is for us all to be singing the same hymns parish-wide. And then we decided we would take turns picking hymns. So I picked September, Pastor Jocelyn picked October, and she picked hymns that you won't know. And it's okay. She picked hymns from the new hymn supplement that you don't even know exists, which is also okay, because when that happens, in the other three congregation, Roseanne makes copies of the hymn and puts it in a bulletin, so she's going to do that here now as well. And otherwise, if it's something in the green or the red hymnal that we don't know, that's why we have page numbers. That's why God made page numbers. So it's okay. And Pastor Jocelyn said to tell you, don't yell at me, yell at her. <laughs> um, so that's coming up. There was something else I wanted to tell you, but... I'll let Royce come and tell, give you his announcement, see if I remember the one I wanted to give you. Just to let you know, the car wash scheduled for October 8th had been canceled due to a lack of uh, volunteers, so just to let you know that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, this stuff is. Yeah, this is going to be. But could we get some men to carry it out to the back for us helpless ladies? Okay. <laughs> Anyhow, if we could, and if you did not bring anything today and you wanted to put cash in an envelope, just mark it, baby food pantry. How do we make a check out to them? You should know. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Tuesday night at 6.30, that's this Tuesday, is our first cricket class again. We're presuming for fall. Um, you don't have to have a cricket if you want to come and learn what it's about. There will be plenty of people who are willing to share theirs and their knowledge. And um, we are going to be making infusible ink mugs. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And like I said, if you're interested in seeing what all the cricket Thank you. My other two announcements were, thank you for filling up the pasta box out there. See, Denise is smart. Because when she brought those boxes, everybody's like, those are so big, those will never get filled. They got filled in all four congregations. Because, you know, we're always going to fill a void, right? <laughs> so good for Denise thinking of that. That's going to a little free pantry at House of Prayer. This, is, no, this is We Care Pantry. 
And also, try to stay calm. Coffee hour starts again today. Yeah, you didn't need to stay that calm. Jeez. Right. Anything else? Then please turn to the back of your bulletin where there's the Harvest Home Litany. You all there? Yeah. No, you don't have to stand. Loving God, your overflowing goodness comes to us new every day. We thank you for the multitude of ways in which you provide for us. Food, family, friendship, housing, health, time, talents, and many more blessings, too numerous to count. God of generosity, make us faithful stewards of your good gifts. We pray for people in our community and beyond who face unemployment, ill health, isolation, or financial worries, especially those who do not have enough to eat. Continue to strengthen the ministries that, we op that offer support, provision, caring relationships, and real hope. God of generosity, make us faithful stewards of your good gifts. We thank you for calling us to play our part, working with others to bring about the change you desire. Give us courage and insight to develop policies and systems that support abundant life for all. God of generosity, make us faithful stewards of your good gifts. We thank you for those who are serving and caring for others through congregations, charitable organizations, and public services. Give them strength, perseverance, and times of rest as they work to support others. God of generosity, make us faithful stewards of your good gifts. Creator and sustainer, bless these gifts and the people who brought them. Continue to sustain the people who work at We Care Food Pantry and prosper their efforts as they minister to your beloved children. And help us all to ensure that people everywhere may share the plenteousness of the earth, rejoicing in your goodness. We pray in the sacred name of Jesus. Amen. Now you may stand. We are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our understanding. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us together acknowledge our failure to love as Jesus loves. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. We have failed to be good stewards of your creation. Place us on the path that leads us to life and be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God makes the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue in God's abiding love. Amen.
to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, rich in mercy, you look with compassion on this troubled world. Feed us with your grace and grant us the treasure that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> the Old Testament lesson is Amos chapter 6, verses 1 and then 4 to 7. Woe to those who are at ease in Zion, and for those who feel secure on Mount Samaria. Woe to those who lie in beds of ivory and lounge on their couches and eat lambs from the flock and calves from the stall, who sing idle songs to the sound of the harp and like David, improvise on instruments of music, who drink wine from bowls and anoint themselves with the finest oil, but are not grieved over the ruin of Joseph. Therefore, they shall now be the first to go into exile, and the revelry of the loungers shall pass away. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We'll read Psalm 146 responsively. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are out of The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The epistle lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 6. Of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we have brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. 
Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is blessed and he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be the honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that is really life. The word of the Lord. according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all this, and they ridiculed him. So he said to them, <clears throat> there was a rich man, <clears throat> I don't know if he did that or not, there was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us is a great chasm that has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Are you ready for a memory test? Because I want to give you context for this. And the context for this is last week's lesson and the week before's Gospel lesson. Do you remember them? Okay, two weeks ago was the lost sheep and the lost coin. Remember that? Last week was the, 
Come on, it was only last week. <laughs> the shrewd manager, that's what we call him nowadays. In the old days, he was the unjust steward. Now he's the shrewd manager. Remember the guy who was embezzling or whatever and his boss found out was going to fire him? <clears throat> So he came up with this plan to turn all of his boss's creditors into friends, remember? And Jesus is like, yeah, do that. Do that with your wealth. Because you can't serve God and wealth. You can't do that. And the week before with those parables, he was saying, the kingdom of heaven is like. And he tells these weird stories about people who have lots of stuff and they lose one thing and go after it. And then when they find it, they throw big parties. So now we get to today, where the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all of this and ridiculed him. Why were they ridiculing him? That was a rhetorical question I'm going to tell you. Here's what they're thinking. I can't say this for sure because it's not in scripture but my interpretation of them ridiculing them is here's what they're thinking these are pharisees what do pharisees do interpret the law live by the law strictly make you live by the law and expect to be rewarded for it by god They believe they are rich, lovers of money. They believe they are rich in material things because of their righteousness. They believe that that's the, I don't want to say consequence, reward. Reward for their righteousness. That's too many R's in one, <laughs> one sentence that God owes them because they're righteous. So God owes them great wealth and great possessions and status because they're righteous. That's what they believe. And now there's this hayseed guy from Nazareth in Galilee. I mean, please, how much more bumpkin can you get? Who comes into our city and starts teaching a different theology that's bordering on heresy. Something about using your wealth to help people. I don't know. He's nuts. So Jesus tells them, tells them this story. And did you listen to this story? Because we all know this story, right? We've heard it before, right? Anybody? Okay, good. It's very familiar, I hope. But let's deeply look at this and see what's going on here. Because this rich guy, who doesn't have a name, did you notice that? We don't know who he is. He's just some rich guy. At his gate is Lazarus, who is exceedingly poor, a homeless guy who apparently is about to die from malnutrition. He's sitting at the rich man's gate. And I say he's malnutrition because it's talking about how he would love to have whatever fell off the rich guy's table. Plus he has sores all over his body. And the rich guy, he has to walk by him at least twice a day. When he leaves and when he comes back. And depending on how many times he leaves and comes back every day, it could be more than twice, but at least twice a day he walks past Lazarus and never, ever sees him. He doesn't see him. I mean, he might peripherally see some guy laying there, but you know, what's that doing on my property? Just walks right by. And Jesus wants us to know that even the dogs come and lick Lazarus' sores. And that's important. 
because in first century Palestine, dogs are like sewer rats to us. You don't want them. Pastor Mike said this morning, like spotted lantern flies. <laughs> if you see one, kill it. That's how dogs were in first century Palestine. So Jesus is making the point. There's this guy who's overflowing with wealth who walks by Lazarus twice a day and never does anything for him. Even the dogs take care of him. Because a dog licking your sores, that's medicine. Did you know that? Dog saliva is healing. The dogs are taking better care of this guy than the rich man is. And then they both die, apparently on the same day. <clears throat> the angels come and bring Lazarus to Abraham. There aren't any angels involved with the rich guy. Did you know that? And the rich man died and was buried. Okay. So now the rich guy's in Hades. Lazarus is with Abraham. Now let me caution you here, and I'll caution you again. What Jesus is not saying here. He is not being prescriptive. He's being descriptive. He is not teaching, <clears throat> if you don't take care of poor people, you're going to hell. That's not what he's saying. Because Lazarus isn't in heaven, and the rich man isn't in hell. He's in Hades, which is where unrighteous people go to await the resurrection. Lazarus is with Abraham in paradise, which is where righteous people go to await the resurrection. Remember Jesus on the cross to the repentant thief? Today you'll be with me where? In paradise, awaiting resurrection. First Jesus is his, and then ours. All right, so that's not what's going on here. But this is what's going on. The rich man sees <coughs> Father Abraham far away, about that big, and he, he has really good eyes, and sees Lazarus beside him, and hollers out, Father Abraham, I'm so hot and thirsty. Send Lazarus to me with water. Really? I mean, the freaking audacity, the privilege here? He walked by this man twice a day, didn't care about him at all. He could not have cared any less. And now he's dead, he's hot. He's thirsty. All of a sudden, he knows Lazarus' name. Oh, said Lazarus. And wants Lazarus to what? Serve him. Seriously? You're dead, and you're still picking on this guy? You want him to serve you. How much privilege do you have, rich man? And Abraham says, that, that ain't happening. First of all, you had probably of water when you were living. You should have saved some. Lazarus had nothing. Now he has everything he wants. And besides that, see how little we are up here? <laughs> we can't get to each other. Well, then send him to my father's house to warn my brothers. Again, make Lazarus my slave. Make Lazarus do my bidding. Send him to my brothers. OK, we see a little tiny inkling of compassion. But what does he want to warn them for? So they don't end up here too. Not so they will learn to care for the poor. That's not what he wants them to know. Tell them, watch out, because they're going to end up in Hades if they're not whatever we're supposed to do. I don't know what that is. But Lazarus can tell them. And Abraham says, seriously, man? You have Moses, you have the prophets. They can read those. Now, they're not going to read those. Send Lazarus. And Abraham says, you know what? If they can read Moses and the prophets and not get it, they're still not going to get it, even if somebody is raised from the dead. And I said in Bible study on Tuesday, we should then say the gospel of our snarky Lord. 
Because there's a little foreshadowing there, isn't it? Pharisee, you won't even understand this if somebody is raised from the dead. Yeah. Jesus is trying to invite us into generosity. He's trying to invite the Pharisees into generosity today. They're not going to get it. I know that because I continued to read this story in Luke. You probably have too. And if you haven't, guess what? I highly encourage you to do so. But Jesus is inviting us into generosity today. He's not yelling at us and saying, you know, if you don't take care of the poor, you're going to go to hell. He's saying, listen, if you belong to the kingdom of God, the basis of your existence is these two things. Love God, take care of each other. And his mind is boggled, I'm sure, how these Pharisees who are supposed to be leaders in this community, in the Jewish community, which is literally a nation founded on those principles, literally a nation founded on those principles, how he could descend into this, into this prosperity gospel, into this idea that my wealth is mine because I earned it and God owes it to me. And if you don't have any, that's your fault. If you were righteous, you'd be rich. Apparently you're unrighteous. That's on you. That's not on me. I did what I'm supposed to do, so I have my stuff. Too bad for you. How does it get there from love God and take care of each other? How does that happen? And I'm talking about first century Palestine to keep it safe, but you know there's a couple other places in the world today where that happens. I won't name any countries, although I could name tons of them. where there's this idea that people are poor and it's their own fault. If they worked hard like I did, if they get out and get a job, if they quit pretending they were disabled, if they quit having children, then they wouldn't be in this predicament. It's not my responsibility. Too bad for them. Here's God. Attention, Kmart shoppers. <laughs> It is your responsibility. For once in our life, all of the lessons have the same message. This never happens. All four lessons today have that exact same message. Yeah, it is your responsibility. It is our responsibility. Because here's the trick. We have great wealth. We do did we earn it from our righteousness? And if any of you say yes, we're going to the office immediately. <laughs> we start every worship with confession. Don't we? Sometimes we say we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. What did we say today? We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. It's not our righteousness that gives us wealth. It's God who gives us wealth. And why does God do that? It's a gift. And I know we have a hard time in our minds separating material gifts from God and, or we don't have a hard time. We absolutely separate material gifts from God and spiritual gifts from God. I mean, we still have a hard time sometimes with our spiritual gifts, remembering that we're supposed to use them. But we're getting better at that. But our material gifts are the exact same thing. The gifts, they're gifts, right? A gift you don't earn. Anybody who's ever given me or I've given something to all you people that I give presents to. You know, I've said this a million times. If you say to me, oh, you didn't have to do that, what do I say back to you? I know. 
That's what makes it a gift. If I had to give it to you, it would be wages. <laughs> Same with these things. Spiritual gifts, material gifts from God are gifts. The part that we forget is they're not to us, they're through us. God gives us spiritual gifts and material gifts so that we can use them for the benefit of others. First and foremost, to build up the church and then to care, as Amos said today and as the psalm said today, to care for the widow and the orphan and the poor. That's what those things are for. They're not a mark of our greatness. They're not a sign from God that he loves you more than he loves somebody else. And we need to rid ourselves of that. And we need to rid ourselves of this horrible idea. I don't know where this started, and I don't want to know. I want it to stop this idea of deserving and undeserving poor. You can walk out this door and run into poor people. You can probably stay inside this room and run into poor people. There is so much need in our communities these days. Food scarcity, you guys are doing a fantastic job addressing food scarcity. Thank you. Thank you. I mean that. Thank you for doing that. That is so important because other things that happen in our lives aren't going to happen if we don't have food, are they? If I can't nourish my body, how am I going to get up and go to work? But there's lots of other need in our communities. And most, I'm not going to say most, I'm going to say all. Everyone we know or don't know, everyone in our communities who is poor deserves our help. Every one of them. It doesn't matter what's going on with them. Maybe they made mistakes that led to their poverty. Who hasn't made a mistake? Anybody here doesn't make mistakes? Anybody make a mistake that led you into something that you went, mm, how am I going to get out of this? And how many of you got out of it on your own? We get out of it when people help us. It doesn't matter if they made a mistake, but I would venture that most people who live in poverty didn't make mistakes. They have catastrophic medical bills, maybe. Or they got laid off from their job. COVID was great at that, having people get laid off from their jobs, losing their employment. Maybe they were in an abusive relationship and had to leave, and now it's really tough. They're trying to raise the kids on their own. It's hard to raise kids and have a full-time job. Who knows what's going on with them? And it doesn't matter. What matters is that unlike this rich guy, we see them. And when we walk out of our house, we see them. And we think, how can I help? How can I help? And I don't mean just us individually, but certainly us individually but us as communities, us as congregations, us as the entire church, us as Beaver County, us as the state of Pennsylvania, all of us together, we need to see people in need and use this wealth that God has given us to help them. It says that 179 gazillion times in Scripture. I never counted, but it's that many. I assure you, Jesus is saying it today. And what he's telling the Pharisees and telling us is this. You, Pharisees, have your theology backwards. I don't. It's not, I do all these righteous things, and so God owes me a spot in the kingdom and owes me great wealth. It's, God has brought you into the kingdom. Did you deserve it? No. Nope. Why did God bring you into the kingdom? Because he loves you. Why does God love you? Because he loves you. 
He brought you into the kingdom and he showered you with gifts. And now you get to use those for the benefit of others. You get to be the actual body of Christ. You get to be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. You get to help people. You get to. You get to. Because God and Jesus Christ has given us everything we need to do that. I know it begs the question, well, how come some people have and some don't? Because if we're left to our own, this is what happens. There won't be community. We won't see that we're all connected. We won't understand that we live interdependently, that we all need each other. We'll never understand that. How many people love Fiddler like I do? Fiddler on the roof, that is, not just people who play the violin. Anybody love Fiddler? Remember in the village, there's the beggar? Remember? And every Sabbath, everybody, the butcher gives them a little bit of meat for Sabbath, and the beggar gives them a little bit of bread, and Tevi gives them a little bit of milk for Sabbath, right? He's the beggar. That's his job. That's so the people in the village who are dirt poor themselves can, can do good deeds for somebody else. Because they know whatever they have, they're supposed to use for the benefit of other people. That's why there's a beggar in the village. That's the beggar's job. And so the whole village knows we're all connected. We all need each other, all of us. God's been saying that since Eden. When are we going to hear it, church? We all need each other. We all have something to give. We all have somebody to help. That's our job, church. That's our job. Amen. Amen.
God has made us a holy people through our baptism into Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God. As scattered grains of wheat, we are gathered together into one bread. So let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. O oh God, rich in mercy, you fill your church with righteousness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Inspire musicians, artists, poets, and all who create beauty in our worship, and empower by your spirit the people, leaders, and pastors of our parish, and those of St. John's Stone Church, Lancaster Township, Bethesda, Lower Burrell, and Prince of Peace, Latrobe, that our praise may be enlivened, that we will be rich in good works and ready to serve your loving kindness, God of grace. You shall reign forever. Show all public servants, especially President Biden and Governor Wolf, our legislators, our judiciary, how best to increase equity in and among nations, peoples, and local governments, that understanding and compassion might be accessible for all. God of grace. Hear our you love and protect the earth and its creatures. Provide water, food, shelter, and favorable habitats, especially for endangered species. And give us the wisdom to preserve threatened ice caps, glaciers, parks, and beaches. God of grace. Hear our you give food to the hungry, set captives free. Lift up those who are bowed down and watch over the stranger. Hear our prayer for those who are ill, in danger, abandoned, or bereaved, especially those we name aloud or silently. And stir us truly to see our neighbors and to act to their best interests, God of grace. Hear our prayer. You unfold the saints who have died in the arms of your loving care. Grant that the holy angels accompany us and bring us to eternal life with them in the light of your presence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gather together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet and a blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, 
who sets a table for all. Promises. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. This is Jesus, conqueror of death and bringer of eternal life. Come and receive him.
May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. once at House of Prayer and once here. Rehearsals for that start next Sunday at House of Prayer at 7.15 if you want in on that. But we'll put more info in the newsletter and in the upcoming, what do you call them things? Announcement sheets and bulletins and such. But since it's parish-wide and one of the performances is going to be here, it'd be nice to have Rehoboth people involved. Okay? Okay. Okay. Go in the name of our triune God to serve in love. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ go with you. And also with you.